Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So, today we are going to start with the another topic that is the four subspaces that are connected with the linear algebra. So, let us discuss that one. <coughs> So, the today, today's topic is about the four subspaces. So, today we are going to deal with the matrix, a matrix of order m cross n. So, how we can find out the subspaces, four subspaces are related to this matrix. So, before that we just want to discuss one function that is called the linear functions. So, a function f that maps position in the domain D to the points in some T is there. So, I am defining the map f from some domain D to the set T. If this is going from D to real number, then I can say T is a set of real numbers. So, if it is a complex number or whatever it is. So, we are mapping the function f from the domain D to the, the co-domain that is T. So, a function f that maps position in the domain D to the point T is said to be linear function whenever f satisfy the following conditions. The first one is that, that if I take the function f of the addition of two numbers from the domain x plus y, then it should be the sum of their images. So, it should be equal to f x plus f y and if I take the scalar multiple alpha times x and then I taking the map of that one. So, that should be equal to the scalar multiple of that the image of that under the function f for every x and y belongs to D. So, this is type of functions are called linear functions. So, this type of functions uh, you if you see from here then looking at this type of function you can also remember the definition of the subspaces because in the case of subspaces in the case of subspaces. We also have to satisfy two condition. What is the vector addition? And another is the scalar multiplication. These two. And here also we, if you see it, it is also type of vector addition we are doing. So instead of vectors, we are dealing with x and y that is coming from the domain, and this is also the scalar multiple. So, we can have some relations between the linear function and the subspaces. So, for example, I just take uh, one example that how the linear functions uh, will be look like. I can define the function f maybe from r square to r or maybe I can define the function f x 1 x 2 is equal to x 1 plus x 2. <coughs> so, in this case I just want to see whether it is a linear function or not. Then if you take f, so this is a I am taking the function here. So, let we take x and y belongs to r square, then x will be written like this one, y is equal to y 1, y 2. Now, I can take the linear combination x plus y. So, that can be written as x 1 plus y 1 x 2 plus y 2. Now, I take the function f of x plus y. So, it will be equal to f of x 1 plus y 1 x 2 
plus y 2 and this is equal to given here. So, from here I can write as x 1 plus y 1 plus x 2 plus y 2 and this can be written as x 1 plus x 2 because it is coming from the real number and y 1 plus y 2 and this is also equal to x 1 x 2 plus f y 1 y 2 and that is equal to f of x plus f of y. So, this is true for all x y. So, true for all x y belongs to the domain r square. So, this is now from here you can check that this is satisfied. So, this is the first one we are doing then the second one I can take f of alpha x. So, it can be written as f of alpha x and x I am taking here this. So, it can be written as a alpha x 1 x 2. So, it can be alpha x 1 alpha x 2 and this is equal to according to the transformation I am taking alpha x 1 plus alpha x 2 and from here I can say that alpha is x 1 plus x 2 and this is I can write as alpha f of x 1 x 2 and that is equal to alpha f of x. So, second property is also satisfied. So, from here I can say that the mapping whatever the mapping we have defined from x x 1 x 2 that is equal to So, this is I can write as x 1 x 2 x 1 plus x 2 is a linear function or map we also call it map. So, this is a linear functions or a map we can define. Now, so from here now we define the definition subspaces and linear functions. So, now we want to find the relation between these two. So, for a linear function f mapping from R n to R m. So, now we are talking about the matrix A that is of type m cross n. So, let R f denote the range of the function f. So, R f basically is set of all the images f x such that x belongs to R n and we know that this will be the subset of R raised to power n, R m because that is the functions coming to this one. So, for example, I take a matrix A, suppose I take a matrix like this one uh, 1, 1, 2 and 2, 1, 3. So, suppose I have taken this matrix, this is 2 cross 3 matrix. Now, if I take the transformation using this matrix, then definitely I have to, I want to calculate what is the A x. So, A is here 1 1 2 and 2 1 3 and I will taking a vector applying on this one. So, it is 2 cross 3. So, it should be 3 cross 1. So, suppose I am applying it on the x 1 x 2 x 3. So, that is 3 cross 1. So, from here if you see this one I will get here x 1 plus x 2 plus 2 x 3 2 x 1 plus x 2 plus 3 x 3. So, this is a vector I am getting. So, and this vector is 2 cross 1. So, it, this is a matrix from 
of order 2 cross 3 and I am taking the vector x coming from R3 and then the image is going to R square. So, I can say that this A represent a transformation that is from R3 to R2. So, R3 means the, the triplet I am taking and so that is coming from R3 to R2. So, I am taking the vector from R3 that is coming from the domain. So, this is my domain here. I can say there is a domain and then the image is going to the R2. So, this is the mapping we are basically applying here. So, this is what we have written. So, we have defined that for a linear function f mapping R n to R m, let range f denote the range of R f is the range of the function f that is given by this one. So, then we have the theorem that the range of every linear function f from R n to R m is a subspace of R m and every subspace of R m is the range of the sum linear function. It means that if I take a map f from R n to R m, actually sometime we also represent R like this one. So, this is same equivalent. So, we have a linear function from R n to R m. So, it says that the range of f that will be is a subspace of R m and and in this case that if S is any subspace of R m, then it is the it is the range of some linear functions. So, this is the definition here we have defined the theorem and now we want to prove this theorem. So, let us start doing this one. So, the first one. So, the first one says that I we have a map from R n to R m. So, this is same as I have showed the matrix of the order m cross n. Because whenever we deal with the vector spaces having the dimension more than 1 that is like a R n to R m and we want to if we want to show the linear function then that come across the matrix. So, that we will discuss in the future, but just now I am defining a map that can be also written in the form of the matrix A m cross n. So, I am writing this is the function f. Now, so R f the set of all the images such that x belongs to R n. Okay. And definitely we know that this is a subset of R m because if I take any element from the domain applying the function f, then it will go to here. So, it is a subset of R m. Now, <coughs> let we have, so now we want to show that this R f is a subspace of R m. So, for this one we need to satisfy two condition vector addition and scalar multiplication. So, now we have to satisfy the two conditions for subspaces. So, the first one is that vector addition. So, let 
we take y1 and y2 some belongs to rm so i'm taking two elements from the the range set rm not from rm i just take from rf then there exist some say x1 and x2 such that f of x1 is equal to y1 and f of x2 is equal to y2 because i am taking two fun two elements that is distinct elements from the range space so if it is in the range space then definitely there will be some x1 and x2 from rn such that fx1 is equal to y1 and fx2 is equal to y2 so this x1 and x2 is coming from the domain that is rn now y1 plus y2 so this i want to see that where this will lie so this can be written as f x1 plus f x2 and this can be written as f of x1 plus x2 because f is a linear map so it is a linear map or linear function so this is the property of the linear map and now from here x1 plus x2 belongs to the domain because x1 we are taking from the domain x2 is we are taking from the domain so and f is applying from the rn so it is a domain so now from here i can say that which implies that y1 plus y2 also belongs to the range of f because it is coming as a function applying on rn and definitely its image are y1 plus y2 and it should be from the range space so it shows that y1 plus y2 is also belongs to the range space also if i take for any scalar alpha so this is i am taking the scalar alpha alpha y1 can be written as alpha y1 i can write as a x1 and since it is a linear map i can write it as alpha x1 so in which implies that alpha y1 also belongs to the range space of function f okay so from here the scalar multiplication of y1 is also belongs to the range space of f so from here we can say that that the two properties vector addition and scalar multiplication are satisfied which imply that the range space of f is a subspace rm and rm we already know that it is a vector space so here we know that that rn and rm are vector spaces that we already know so range space of f is a subset of rm and then we also showed that it also satisfies the vector addition and scalar multiplication so it is a subspace of rm so the first one is satisfied conversely second one is because we have to show that the range of every linear function is a subspace of rm so that we have shown now we have to show 
that every subspace of Rm is the range of sublinear function. So this one we want to show. Now we need to show that any subspace say S in this case of Rm is a range of some linear function. So, this one we want to discuss. Now, for this one, let S is a subspace of Rm. So, this one we have just defined. <coughs> now, the F is a map from Rn to Rm. So, that we already know. Suppose S is equal to span of V1, V2, Vn because S is a subspace of Rm. So, I know that it can be spanned with the vectors. So, say I have taken V1, V2 up to Vn. So, these vectors are spanning the whole subspace S. So, I can write that S. So, if it is span of this, then I can say that S is equivalent to the linear combination alpha 1 V 1 plus alpha 2 V 2 alpha n V n. So, it is set of all the linear combination of this one, where alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are scalars. Now, so now, now let us construct a matrix. So, I construct a matrix say A. So, let us take a construct a matrix A. So, what I am doing is that putting column vector as this V 1, V 2 up to V n. Now, I have taken the n number of vectors V 1, V 2, V n. So, I am putting this one as the columns of the matrix this one. So, now from here you can see that this is n number of vectors. So, it has the n number of columns and in this case, it is coming from the R m. So, it has the component m components, each of the vector v 1 has a m component. So, you from here you can see that this will be a matrix of order m cross n. So, I have taken the n number of vectors that we are taking that it is uh, spanning the S that is the subspace of R m and that each of the vector has a m number of component. So, from here I can write like this one. Now, so this now the linear combination as given above that is in 1, we can construct a vector that is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n transpose, it means the column vector. So, that belongs to R 
n cross 1 it means it has a n number of component and cross 1 means it is a column vector. So, this I am writing then what I could do I will write a into so this I call it alpha so a alpha. So, it become v 1 v 2 v n and alpha is alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n. Now, I, I have taken the alpha from the R n. So, this is containing the n number of component and this is the, the matrix A. Now, from here this one if I so it is a matrix of order m cross n and this is n cross 1 and now we can multiply. So, from here you can see that this will become alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 and I can write alpha n v n. So, this one I am getting from the right hand side by multiplying this vector with this matrix and this can be written as alpha 1 v 1 and alpha 2 v 2, but what is this alpha 1 v 1 and alpha 1 it is a linear combination of v 1 v 2 v 3 and that is coming from the S. So, basically if you take from this this is equal to S. So, from here I can say that So, the function I am taking function f x is equal to a x is linear because f x plus y can be written as a x plus y and this we can write as a x plus a y and that is f x plus f y. So, I have taken this transformation as a x as a linear function. So, in this case it is satisfying this one and also f of alpha x it can be written as alpha a x because it is just a scalar I can take around on the left hand side and that becomes f x. So, it is a linear function. So, from here I can say that that the range space of my f in this case is set of all a x such that x belongs to r n cross 1 n cross 1 whenever we write that it is a column space. So, x belongs to a r n cross 1 it means x is a column vector and this is become complete s. So, that shows so which implies that for any subspace S of R m there exists a linear function that is A x in this case such that a range of that linear function f x is equal to A x is equal to the S. So, this is the the proof of the theorem. <coughs> now, the same thing so we have discussed this thing similarly we can discuss about A transpose. So, if I take the A transpose and then I can define the range space of A transform. So, what is going to be there? Now, if I my A is m cross n then we know that A transpose 
will be matrix that will be suppose it is matrix B. So, it is n cross n. So, m cross n that is n cross n. So, in this case I can say that the range space of A transpose is set of all. Now, we have to take A transpose y suppose I take the y and y in this case is coming from R m. So, this will belongs to R m. Okay, so, I can say from the range space of this is the set of all A transpose y such that y belongs to R m. Okay, so, we have discussed the range space of matrix A and so just now we have discussed that we have defined the linear map from R n to R m and then we have defined the range space of f. Okay, so, from here now after that using this one we have shown that for any linear map from R n to R m there is a matrix involved that is A such that we can have a linear transformation for each of the subspace of S this one. So, now from here I have shown that if we define the linear transformation with a matrix then we can also have the range space of R t. So, this is the definition we have taken for the range space of A t that is taking the transformation of matrix A that is uh, the transpose and putting the vector y applying on the y. So, that is the range space of A transpose where y is coming from R and definitely this is subset of R. So, it is just the converse of this one. So, these things uh, will, so let me stop today here. So, today we have started with uh, 4 subspaces. So, in that case we have discussed the linear function and then we have discussed that how the linear function can be represented by the matrix and we have discussed about the theorem related to that one. So, in the next lecture we will continue with this one. So, thanks for watching, thanks very much.